I love that meme. I will cut this part. I love that meme that's like Azula talking to Zuko. And she's like, the only reason Katara beat me was because I was in the middle of a mental breakdown. And Zuko's like, she didn't even blood bend you. And Azula's what, like, what? what? <laughs> Hello, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore how ancient myths become modern pop culture by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 23, Circe. I'm your co-host, on loan from Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from the Caribbean, DJ. How's everybody doing today? I ended up in the Caribbean after Blackbeard returned home. Anyway. <laughs> it just, just, just stop, full stop. That's the end of that full story. Stop. No need to elaborate. Why? <laughs> cool. All right. Well, before we fully dive in, let's go ahead and swing by the camp store to make sure we have everything we need. This is the first episode of September, which means it's time for the monthly Patreon donation. Every month, we donate $1 for every patron we have over on Patreon to a children's literacy charity. But this month, we're doing something a little different. In light of everything that has recently happened in Afghanistan, this month we are donating to the International Refugee Assistance Project. The IRAP organizes law students and lawyers to develop and enforce a set of legal human rights for refugees and displaced persons by mobilizing direct legal aid, litigation, and systematic advocacy. IRAP is part of the urgent effort to bring at-risk displaced Afghans to safety. We currently have six patrons, so we'll be donating an additional $20, bringing our total donation to $26. And as American citizens, we are horrified at what our government has done to Afghanistan. The literal least we can do is donate to the cause. If you're as horrified by these events as we are, we encourage you to visit the IRAP website and learn how to get involved. You'll find the link in our show notes. Thank you to our patrons for making this donation possible. And now, on to the show. All right, so DJ, what do you remember about Cersei from the Sea of Monsters? I... Remember that she was on an island Mm -hmm. in the Sea of Monsters Yep. with a bunch of little girls and, like, teenage girls who were, like, the handmaids. Okay, yeah. She turned people originally into normal pigs, and it's like, pigs got messy, so now they're guinea pigs. And she tried to tempt Annabeth Mm -hmm. by having her join... Cersei. Yes. I mean, that's about it. That's about that's it. Fun. No, yeah, she, like, runs... Uh, what is that called specifically? I got it right here. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Like, CeCe's Spa? Probably. CeCe's Spa, something like that. That sounds like something that they'd be <laughs> going to. Mm-hmm. CeCe's was... Spa and Resort. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. We find out later that one of the little girls that was there was Raina. I don't why you saying little girls is just it's creeping a little weird. me out it's a little weird. so much the, like like well one of the girls sure i could say that but they were fucking children i mean yes, i mean not children. like fucking children but they were children <laughs> yes they are children but like they're like children like annabeth and percy are children like little girl R- reyna was like eight when she was there is reyna that much younger than percy reyna's pretty young she's not yeah. that much younger than percy what is that, like, four or five years? Yeah, because if... Well, he it would be, like, six years. Because if he's, like... Well, not six years. He's 13 in this book, so five years. If she was eight. Stop! We're not talking about Percy anymore. Reyna is more important than every other character. Reyna... We're just gonna go... Age. No, that's... Hold on. Just What is her age in, in uh, Son of Neptune? Heroes of Olympus. Okay. Oh, yeah, she's about 18, so yeah. I mean, she was still In really Charles young. In Charles of Apollo. Yeah, she was still young. Yeah, 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 still young, but I wouldn't oh, say wait, no. little girl. She'd be a oh, girl. That's Frank Chang. She'd be a yeah. kid. I'm 22. Anybody younger than 18 is a little child. Oh, yes. Yes, this is this is fact. I'm 27, and anyone... And un- I'm a little... Anyone, and, you <laughs> and I'm are a little a, kid. You are a wee babe. Like, literally, you are a wee babe. <laughs> I am like twice your size, and I'm still a child to you. <laughs> yes, you, you are, but you are a wee babe. <laughs> so, so Cersei Spa. Cersei Spa. Is David? How would you 
describe the spa itself? It's probably pretty luxurious. We never actually get to see much of it. They said, hey, yeah, it's on a tropical island. But, like, immediately they were intercepted and Percy was turned into a guinea pig. He was. (laughs) Pretty quick. He was, yeah. Oh, sorry. So, you're fine. But, like, we don't get to see much of it. I bet it was pretty nice. Definitely, like, real nice for, like, the girls that would go there. I bet, Yeah. (laughs) I bet. Like, immediately guys get picked up, turned into guinea pigs, and sent off to a kindergarten class. Yeah? No, that's basically it. Yeah, because earlier you said, you know, turning people into animals, and I'm like, mm, but, like, only certain people are getting turned turning into animals. Turning dudes into Turning pigs. dudes. Yep, dudes. All Any woman who rolls up on that island gets to just hang out on this spot, which does sound nice, but also it's very, very much framed as, like, like backhanded, complimenty... I can make you your best version of yourself, but with the emphasis on that you are not the best version of you right now and only I can help. Like, very diet culture yeah. and, like, really gross. Like, even with it being, like, a tropical paradise, it's, like, it implies that the thing that is actually keeping these women staying on the island is this constant, like, carrot of, like, but I can make you better. But only Cece can make you better. You have to stay because only I can make you better. And that, like... Cause that's like her, and it's it's gross. Like, and it's supposed to be, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why Annabeth doesn't fall for it. No. She's like, bitch, I'm perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, we we definitely have to take a, a side tangent real quick to talk about the the peak Percybeth moment that is after poor Percy has been turned into a guinea pig and has been dropped into the little guinea pig cage. And then Annabeth comes back into the room, and she has been, like, full-on makeover. Hair done, makeup perfect, like, everything. And Percy's like, she looks fucking gorgeous. But she doesn't look like Annabeth. Like, he's not vibing with yeah. this, because that's not what <laughs> like, Annabeth... That's, that's not, that's that's not, not her. And then yeah. he starts screaming, because, like, Annabeth, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, like, please. So, it's, it's very cute, because it's not like... I'm going to talk about the Archie comics for just one second. <laughs> I know. Twist. I love the Archie comics. That was like the first comic book series that I was like super into. It was like, oh, Archie's was. Digest. Dad would buy them for me at the at Winco in the grocery line. But they recently, some years ago, did a full like on like great reboot of the Archie series and like make it like modernized teens. I'm not talking Riverdale, like the comic book. It was actually super fun. It's still ongoing. It's really fun. Anyway, so Archie and Betty are not currently dating at the start of the comic book. No one knows why, but they do know there was a huge fight, and it was called the lipstick incident. Eventually, we find out that, like, you know, Betty's always been, like, tomboy, a little, like, rougher, like, likes to, like, she works on cars, she likes to, like, rough house and stuff, but she, like, starts to feel, like, a little self-conscious because, like, some, like, girls are kind of being bitchy to her about, like, kind of, like, being kind of a mess, and she's like, okay, I do want to, like, dress up, though. I do want to wear makeup, so when she goes on a date on Archie, with Archie, she does get, like, dressed up for it. They're going to the movie. She, like, puts on makeup and lipstick. And so, like, she dolls herself up because she wants to. And Archie's, like, so fucking weird about it. Like, he's so fucking weird about it. He's, like, treated her differently and so awkward around her. And she's like, what the fuck? And they get in a huge fight about it. And he's like, you're not you right now. And she's like, what is so different about me? He's like, well, you're just, like, all this. And she, like, takes her lipstick out and just, like, slices him across the face. It's lipstick. He's fine. But she, like, gets it across his mouth. And she's like that's funny, you don't look any different, or you're not any different, implying that, like, you really have a problem with this femininity, but, like, it's not the lipstick, it's you that has the issue with this. So what the point I'm trying to make is that if Annabeth had been the one to go and herself do her hair and do her makeup and, like, want to do those things for herself, I think Percy would have been like, hot damn, that's my dream girl right there. Yeah, that's my dream girl, but I don't know her yet. Like, I don't know, I don't know. we're like, well, we're friends. It's fine. Whatever. Like, we're what? figuring it out. All the right. Goddess of love turned into my best friend. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is like, props to Percy who his issue isn't toxic feelings about traditional feminine things, but more so, Annabeth herself would not want. This would not be a willing choice Annabeth made. Someone made her up to be this, but that's not how Annabeth usually would want to present herself, and that's why he mm-hmm. doesn't like it because of her clear discomfort. Yeah. And that's just what I wanted to say on that. Well, that's fair. That's that's fair. Uh, I haven't read the Archie comics. I never have. I haven't even seen Riverdale. Honestly, it wasn't. I mean, I'm just not into the characters. Not for everybody. Like yeah. So I got nothing to say on that. That's fine. Moving on. So uh, let's talk about. <laughs> so yes, they are. They are turned 
into, yeah, Percy is a guinea pig. He's trapped with all the other worst guinea pigs. Cece, Cersei, as we discover very quickly. It's like, oh, yep, I just sent him off to kindergarten classrooms because I used to turn men into pigs, but that's so much work. Yeah. And so. Uh, and they end up, I mean, obviously Annabeth's like, oh, shit, Percy's a guinea pig. So he gra- she grabs the vitamins that Hermes gave them, mm-hmm. feeds it to so Percy. She takes one. She takes one, yeah. And then feeds one to Percy, or drops into the cage, and he takes a bite out of it. And then so do all the other guinea mm-hmm. pigs that are in that tank. And they were Blackbeard and his crew. Because <laughs> they're like, those were the worst of the worst. That's why they were in the tank. <laughs> That's why they were still here. Him. I couldn't get rid of them. Hey, so, like, props on Cersei for, like, not sending potentially, like, violent, aggressive guinea pigs to first grade classes. Like, I know. Say yeah. what you will, she's she cares about the well-being of the kids. She cares about the well-being of the little girls that could get hurt. Eggs. Could you blame her? It's already hard no, enough not to at be all. a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at so, all. Uh, but, yeah, yeah they... Uh, <laughs> they then ransack they, Cersei's they island. They ransack the whole thing. They ransack Cersei's island. But Percy and Annabeth get off on Blackbeard's ship. They steal the Queen Anne's revenge. <laughs> they steal it because Percy just had a hunch, like, no, I'm going to be better on that ship. And God right. knows he was, 100%. Because yeah. <laughs> this is where we discover that Percy just, one of his superpowers is I control boats. Control specifically sailboats. Sailboats. So, yeah, we couldn't, right, if he's on, like, the... the Because um, they were, like, motorboats and everything. Yeah, they were on motorboats. Like maybe he he he's probably still has like you know his coordinate thing that he can do on water, mm-hmm. uh, but he can't control it like he could a fucking sailboat. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more of like a technical. I think we get into like when the things are like mechanical, it kind of veers more into like Hephaestus's territory. Yeah. Like Leo could kick ass on a boat. He probably could. Oh, one hundred percent. He probably he has. We're talking about Leo yeah. has kicked ass on a boat. We know what's up. <laughs> But Percy can do the the sailing and stuff. So yeah, that, ma- that classic thing. wooden mahogany. Ma- oh, mahogany. <laughs> but yeah, then they sail off to the next adventure. <laughs> to the next adventure. So, but we'll get to that next episode. We will. Uh, first, I want to talk about this. Uh, we usually don't talk about like these segments of the books, but on this one in particular, as I was like going over it again for this episode, I was just like, "Wow, this is kind of pointless." For the plot bit. of the book. Yeah. A little bit. I think it's really to try to be like, oh, Annabeth and Percy know each other so well. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 feel again, like... I love the, the Percybeth moments. Yeah. Obvi, but we get a much bigger one in the next scene. Literally so. the next scene. <laughs> and it's like, if they needed a bow, I don't, I don't know. Like, they could have tossed in the waves, but Percy, like, senses a sunken ship and is able to pull it out of the water and now they're on the Queen Anne's Revenge. It's just there's... I think it's just like they landed on an island because they just suddenly got blasted from a fucking iron cloud. Well, yeah. Well, they're they're floating. Because Annabeth pulls them... Yeah, they're they're flowing on like a life raft. I think Annabeth pulls Percy onto it after after Charybdis and Scylla. I would argue that like even with his powers of water it'd still be hard to keep a sunken boat up. At 13, when he just realized he has these powers? I guess, I guess. Uh, it's just... Here's the thing. Cersei's such a fucking cool character. And she has so much great potential. Not even as just a, a general character and an archetype, but, like, so much great potential for this series to have been more of, like, an ongoing presence. And it's just wasted in this weird diet culture fashion beauty thing that that hey i don't think rick is good at writing female female antagonists i think later he gets better i mean he ever i mean everybody gets better but like uh, no at where he was no he this like was medusa, not a good yeah. oof, cersei wait the scene with medusa was weird a lot of things about the Medusa, yeah so it's just like huh though i would say i'd take the medusa scene over the cersei scene at least in the books yeah, I do think the Medusa scene at least feels more, like, practical, forward mm-hmm. with the plot, driving forward. It gets some stuff. It gets... Uh, the pink poodle follows next. And the, the fucking pink poodle can go, too. Yeah. <laughs> we are getting weirdly into actually being a read-along podcast territory, so let's talk about mythology. Let's talk about mythology. Uh, so, I don't actually know much about Cersei's mythology. Okay. I only know her from the Odyssey, if that's really all she's been in. 
<laughs> that is that is a primary. Cersei does have other myths outside of the Odyssey. A lot of these figures like do like we talked about last week or last episode, Charybdis and Scylla. Like they Hercules encountered them, and the Jason the Argonauts also. So these are like yeah. pretty major figures. But she isn't. You're right. She's best known for the Odyssey because I think the Odyssey is best known. Yeah, one hundred percent. The Odyssey is like. A household name at this point. Mm-hmm. You know it, even if you've never Heard read it. it or aren't a Greek mythology nerd. You know what yeah. the Odyssey is. Dude takes a bad boat trip. Yeah, straight up. I mean, that's the best way to do it. Dude makes mistakes in his bad boat trip. Yeah, t- dude makes mistakes. All right, but Cersei, she is the daughter of the Titan Helios and uh, the ocean nymph Perse. I think is how we're going to pronounce that. And I'm going to move slide past. Okay. And she's also got some some pretty prominent siblings of mythology. Her brother was the keeper of the Golden Fleece and the father of Medea, another powerful Greek sorceress. And her sister was uh, Pasiphae, the wife of King Minos and the mother of the Minotaur. Okay. Yeah. That's a little strange. That's some I stuff. don't know about that one, Chief. No, no, you don't know. She, well, she's a, she's a very prominent family, apparently. Clearly. Some other myths cite her as the the daughter of the, the goddess of magic, Hecate, and a, and a king of uh, Clocus. But most stories are going to have her be like the, the daughter of Helios and the nymph. Mm-hmm. Which is essentially like, and this is important to note, like even in the Odyssey, Cersei is a goddess. Like, she's like, we call her a sorceress and stuff, and that's not inaccurate. She does use magic and stuff and and, and, and herbalists and potions and yeah. things like that to do this stuff. But she's a goddess. She's a full-on immortal goddess. Well, we come across that, like, all the time, right? Child of a titan and a nymph. Does that really inherently make them a goddess? I mean, that's a good point, because I guess we could talk Calypso. Yeah, we could talk Calypso. We could talk, like, Polyphemus, even. The son of a god and a nymph, right? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yes. Ooh. I, mm, mm. Let's, ooh, tangent. Pin in that. Pin in I'm going I'm to pull up the Polyphemus notes and just write that there so we can circle back, because that's a great conversation I want to have, but I'm going to say around right now. Uh, I guess that is, like, yeah, it can go either way, because we also find, like... Because, as we know... What makes people a god is whether or not they're worshipped. Ooh. Specifically I, in this world, because, like, mm. we find that out, I believe, first Trials of Apollo episode when Nero comes out and be like, yeah, I'm alive because people worship me as a god, so I'm a god now. Ha ha. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Owen, host of the Through the Mist podcast, for doing a whole episode about, like, the, the Rowan emperors and, like, how they were worshipped into divinity. Because I definitely, like, I just didn't get it. When I, even when I was reading those books. I'm a grown-up reading the, the early Trials of Apollo books. I'm like, I don't understand. So, like, yeah, <laughs> shout-out to Owen for really breaking that down. I'm like, oh, that shit. That makes, like, diving into, like, the actual history of, like, what does that mean? What were they doing? I'll uh, drop a link to, to his shit. show. It's super fun. But, yeah, yeah. like, that's... I'm just figured I'd bring that one up. <laughs> no, yeah. No, that's a really good point. I guess, I, I guess I'm just going based off of the, the Odyssey is that... Cersei is described as as a goddess. Like, she's... Mm, okay. Especially in this translation that I'm referencing by Emily Wilson, like, they do describe her many times as, she's a goddess. Like, she is uh. the, a goddess Cersei. She's, like, basically, like, a minor goddess of magic, essentially. But you're right. In in the Ryarden books, it is the element of worship that tends to, cr- to create divinity. Yeah. Which questions, like, suddenly on the tangent, a lot of them in this episode a tangent into the actual book series we claim to be about. (laughs) What would that have meant for Percy if he had accepted their offer to become an immortal god at the end of the series? Don't they just offer him immortality? No, they do say uh, you'll become a god. You'll become a god. So, I mean, let's be real here. People already sing Percy's praise. He's not even a god. You're right. You're right. And so it would have been the whole thing of, like, you don't need regular mortals, do you? The demigods of Camp Half-Blood would have done it forever. I'm like... I can't. I was about to bring something up. I'm like, you haven't read that book yet. No! Okay, okay. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. We're jumping off. We're jumping off. We're... 
Back, back like, to Cersei's they, Island. They do touch down on something shut like up, that. Shut up, shut up, shut up. No, I'm Where so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to read them. I want to so badly. I'm just afraid to. If I'm actually being purposely honest, I'm, af- I'm afraid of how that series you ends. You, dude, no. The series end? Best. Okay. The series okay. end okay. is best. Okay. The journey there rips your heart out and God stops it. on it. Well, I read Shadowhunter, <laughs> so that's not surprising. Like, I'm used to that <laughs> shit. Anyway, so Cersei's Island. DJ, do you know what Cersei's Island is called? I don't, actually, no. no. It is just a mess of vowels. A mess of vowels. Just a mess is, of is it vowels. like the French word wazoo? Elaborate. Means bird. What? Dude, it's got every vowel in the fucking. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, this one, at least the English version of this word, actually only has two letters, but they're repeated several times. Spelled uh-huh. A E A E A. <laughs> How do you and pronounce that? Pronounced uh, A E A. A E A. A E A. Yeah. So that that's Cersei's island where she lives. And and then getting back to what I mentioned earlier about Cersei being in various myths outside of the Odyssey, I want to run through those first because I think it's it's really interesting to establish that. In, in, like, Greek mythological traditions, she was, like, a pretty prominent figure, like, not just from the Odyssey, like, she was, like, again, I'm saying, like, she was kind of, like, not, like, a, a Zeus, right, or a Poseidon or a Hera, but, like, she appeared often enough to be, like, a staple of these, these, yeah. these traditions. So she encountered the Argonauts. Uh, Jason and Medea end up on her island after they have fled from Medea's kingdom um, and murdered her brother, Absurtus, Absurtus. I'm gonna say Absurtus. Uh, and there's there's a okay. couple couple versions. Uh, one version is once they run away, Medea takes her brother with her, and when their father goes after them, she kills her brother and cuts him into pieces and scatters <laughs> the body out, so her father will be delayed collecting the body parts of his child. Oh, I'm pretty God. sure her brothers are grown adult at this point, so she like didn't murder yeah. her ten year old brother, but yikes. But like classic Medea though. And then we have Jason, is in another tradition, uh, the brother is sent after them, and when he catches up to them, Jason kills him. Classic Jason, really, though. So. Classic, I'm honestly, just defending his ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, well, I mean, Jason also did some shitty things on the island, so I'll say. Defending his ship. <laughs> uh, defending, yes, this is true. Jason's a hero, okay? Don't. Hera's favorite hero, in Hera's fact. Hera's favorite. So... Uh, anyway, so uh, when they meet Cersei, she basically uh, uh, purifies them from the murder they committed. Uh, the <laughs> scholars believe that this probably reflects like an actual early tradition of the mm-hmm. region. In that particular poem, the animals that surrounded Cersei on her island weren't like men she'd cursed or like former lovers. They were just strange beasts. Quote, beasts not resembling the beasts of the wild, nor like the men in body, but with a medley of limbs. Just like bizarre animals, which I like that vibe. I like that form. Nice. Yeah. Let's see. There was uh, King Picus, who uh, Cersei fell in love with, but he was married to a, a nymph whom he adored. And when Cersei's like, hey, come over here, he's like, no, my wife. And so she turned him into a woodpecker. Oh. Classic Cersei, though. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, like, I'm not siding her on this. Uh, last last episode, we talked about how she was in love with the, the sea god. Uh, the fucking what's-his-face. I'm not going to go through that again. The mermaid yeah. dude. And yeah. when he was like, I really like Skilla. She's not into me. Will you help me make a love potion? So she was like, fuck Skilla. And turned her <laughs> into a monster. So, yeah. like, Cersei's not the best <laughs> person. Cersei's not great? No, but uh, who in Greek mythology is? Hestia. Yeah. Last, last myth I want to touch on before we dive fully into Cersei and the Odyssey is that of uh, Piccolos, who was a giant. And when the war broke out between the gods and the giants, Piccolos fled the battle and ended up in um, Aea and tried to... Get rid of Cersei. Like, I'm going to live here now get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Well, uh, in this particular instance, Helios rose up, uh, rolls up, and kills Piccolos. Uh, So Helios was still around at that point. Yeah, and he's like, that's my daughter. Fuck off. Please don't. Stop it. Mm -hmm. And the 
the blood of the giant became an herb called molly. Or perhaps, uh, moly. It only has one L. And this is the herb that Hermes gives to Odysseus when he arrives on Aya <laughs> to help him resist one last, Cersei's magic. One last fuck you to Cersei. Basically. <laughs> basically. Holy shit. That's pretty good. Which brings that us to the Odyssey. That is pretty good. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in, in, this, in the Odyssey, as I said, uh, Cersei is described as a beautiful, dreadful goddess, like, powerful and stunning, and also will fuck your shit up just because she wants to. Mm, Azula. Ooh. No, I quite like that. Just crazier than shit. I would, you know, I would say... (laughs) End end of the series, Azula. Okay, well, I would... Paranoid, crazier than shit, will fuck you up just for looking at her (laughs) off. I think mm, I would put Cersei as end of season two Azula. That's fair. I just manipulated the Dai Li into helping me conquer Ba Sing Se. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just liked bringing up Azula being crazier than shit at the end. <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, I want to remind everybody, Azula was 14 and had abandonment issues. 100%. But also... S- yeah. <laughs> so... Back to Cersei. Back to Cersei. Real quick, who's the Zuko of of Percy Jackson? I think it's Nico. I want to say yes. To a point. Okay. The only thing that I would have be like, eh, maybe not. Actually, I got nothing. Ha! Okay. <laughs> so back to nothing. Cersei. Yeah. So... I've got, up, as you can see, my, my copy of the Odyssey has a lot of little little sticky notes tabbed out of it. Because I got references. Okay, so Odysseus and his crew roll up and they land on Aea. And like, or not unlike the island of the Lystragonians, part of the crew goes to check it out. Odysseus stays behind. <laughs> Yeah, the captain never joins. What are you talking about? Always like send out a recon group and they'll come back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the crew goes up, they run, they find Cersei. She's like, hey, welcome. Welcome to my island. So great to have you here. I love company. These are my animals. They're very adorable and vicious. Don't worry about it. Let me make you dinner. And so she does. And then the men who eat the dinner get turned into pigs. And she puts them off in the... The, the pig pen, to her credit, like, feeds them pig food. She's going to care for the pigs. They're, her animals are in great Anything hands. is pig food. Anything is pig food. Facts. There is one, one of the crew who did not join for dinner and was like, mm, nope. Uh, this person's, this gentleman's name was Eurylocus? About? And he, uh, he, once he sees, he doesn't eat dinner, sees all of his crewmates getting turned into pigs, and just doubles back to, to Odysseus and the rest of the crew, and is like, like holy hey, there's shit. There's this, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, chick, she turned people into pigs, we should get out of here. We got to leave. And, uh, it's got, it, it's interesting because they, in they mentions that, like, Cersei's Island is, like, you know, covered in, like, we, in... In Sea of Monsters, it talks about how, like, oh, I used to turn men into pigs, but guinea pigs are easier. And, yeah, she turns, like, Odysseus's crew into pigs, but it, it's kind of implied that she kind of turns men into animals in general. Like, around her, like, this, like, palace, this, like, mountain home where she lives on the, on the island, mountain wolves and lions, which she had tamed with drugs. And they, so, yeah, they're, like... Tamed with drugs is wildly different. Then I turned them in, turned men into these animals. I mean, they still opinion. keep their mental faculties when they're turned. They can still, but like you taste, you the give pigs. Them- like I don't know, like yeah, you know, taming them. You can, I guess, tame a guy who's been turned into a lion with drugs. Why turn them into the lion in the first place? That's a really good point. You're right. Okay. That may be just broader traditions of like, oh, it's all kinds of animals and not just pigs. But yeah, if you're just turning them into pigs to make them powerless or animals to make them powerless, you're not going to turn them into a lion and a wolf. Yeah, like those are strong. Mm-hmm. You do not want to fuck with those. No, no. So, uh, Ella, Ella 
Euros. Alaclacus. I don't remember his name moving past it. Uh, Other you know, dude. Someone's going to email smart us and tell man. us he's really important. He yeah, is. Right. He's only the smart one of the bunch, right? So Otis is like, I'm, I'll save him. It's fine. No, 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 no. I'll save him. It's fine. I've... I've gotten out of every I'm, scrape I'm I've been Odysseus. in so far. I'm like, I'm Odysseus. I, the story is named after me. I'm not going to die. <laughs> so I'll take care of the problem. So this is going up to Cersei's place to take care of the problem. And Hermes shows up and is like, boy, you are not ready to take care of this problem. Here's some moly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he shows up and, and gives Here's him some moly. moly. It's made out of this dude who also hated Cersei. So... But that, that guy was definitely like, didn't have reason. He was just an asshole. So, like, it's kind of different. But also, like, he's here for his revenge, essentially. Here, I want to just pause real quick and read how, how Hermes is described. Because we actually didn't talk about Hermes in the Odyssey in a Hermes episode. Bad. No, no, no. I love that episode. I think we nailed it. I think it's what Hermes would have wanted. Especially with this description. So. Yeah. I had almost reached the great house of the Enchantress Circe when I met Hermes carrying his wand of gold. He seemed an adolescent boy, the cutest age, where beards first grow. He took my hand and said, why do you come across these hills alone? And warning about Cersei and how to beat her. But, like, the cutest age? The cutest age? Hermes, what the fuck? Also, Odysseus, what the fuck? Yeah, he's just, Hermes is just like, I'm small and limber. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm 14 years old, watch out. I don't want to Do dive you, into that right now, but uh, Greek culture is a little weird. Anyway, anyway, so so he's like he gives him the moly, and he also is like, oh, so once she can't turn you into a pig, she's gonna want to have sex with you, which you should totally do because she's a goddess, and that's how she's gonna like be cool with you. Don't turn her down, or that's gonna go bad for you. But also, you need to make her swear she won't harm you or her crew anymore, because once she gets you naked, she might. And I'm gonna quote: um, Cut your dick off. She may hurt you, unmanning you. <laughs> Cut your fucking dick off. Yes, exactly. So that's what Odysseus does. He <laughs> takes the herb. He rolls up. Cersei's try gives him food. It as soon as he drinks it, she's like, "Ha ha, motherfucker, you're a pig now." And then he's not. Doesn't she's turn. Like, oh shit. And then I actually love how she responds to to this whole thing. No other man has drunk it and withstood the magic charm, but you are different. Your mind is not enchanted. You must be Odysseus, the man who can adapt to everything. Bright, (laughs) flashing Hermes of golden wand has often told me that you would sail here from Troy on your swift shift. Now sheathe your sword and come to me. Through making love, we may begin to trust each other more. Girl, what the fuck? (laughs) She's like, oh, damn, you're Odysseus. Hey, let's let's hook up instead. What's up? (laughs) <laughs> it's like you adapt to every situation with like the help of gods who confront him before literally, the situation. <laughs> literally, without Hermes and Athena, like he was not making it five <laughs> fucking minutes on the sea of monsters. <laughs> Holy shit. So Yeah, so uh Yeah they have sex. Yeah. She does not unman him. Yep. Yeah. And uh, then they have dinner later, and he's like, hey, my uh, men are still pigs. And she's like, oh, toast, toast, toast. Yeah, don't worry. I'll take care of that. You should go get your ship from the harbor and, like, properly park, right? So we don't get towed later. You should just park in one of the spots. It's fine. And uh, get the rest of your men in here, and it'll be cool. And so they do. Well, while Odysseus is getting the rest of his crew, Cersei, like, literally bathes, like, she turns the men back into she turns them from pigs. So Cersei left the hall, holding her wand, and opened up the pigsty and drove them out, still looking like fat boars, large and fully grown. They stood in front of her. The majestic Lady Cersei walked among them, anointing each of them with some new drug. The potion made their lo- thick hog hair sprout from their bodies. The bristles flew off, and they were men. But younger than before, and much more handsome, and taller. <laughs> and it's like, okay... Just going to soup up your crew real quick. Yeah, yeah. They were handsome and taller and younger even. Wow, thanks, Cersei. So she, like, takes care of him. And then the rest of the true crew arrives. And then they just all hang out on Aia for a year. (laughs) This place is pretty chill. Mm -hmm. Even though he's got somewhere to be. 
Yeah. It's not the greatest. Uh, so after a year, Odysseus is finally like, hey, Cersei, fulfill the vow you made to me to send me home. My heart now longs to go. My men are also desperate to leave. Whenever you are absent, they exhaust me with constant lamation. And she answered, great King Odysseus, master of every challenge, you need not remain in my house against your will. Like very much like, yeah, you can go. You could go whenever yeah. you want. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They could have left as soon as his men were chained, transferred back from pigs, but they definitely decided to stick around. Uh, but first, Cersei does tell him, but you do need to go to the underworld to find this long dead prophet who Persephone has told secrets of life and death, and he's going to need to tell you what you need to do next. <laughs> because, once again, she's a goddess, and so yeah. she just knows these things. Like, oh, but you're going to need this information next, but I can't give it to you, but this guy knows it, so you have to talk to him. And then tells him how I to get to the underworld the and back all again. The time. Like, it's whatever. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. I converse with the fates all the time. They tell me things. Yeah. Not we... everything, but they tell me what you need to do. Yeah, but you get together for sangrias and tapas every couple weeks. And it's pretty good. Mm hmm. So, yeah, that's, um, that's Cersei. That's Cersei. That's Cersei in the Odyssey. And then she also tells uh, Odysseus how to get past Charybdis and Scylla without his crew totally being trashed nice yeah and so basically she's an amazing host after yeah, the whole kinda, thing yeah but then she got somewhere down the line was no longer an amazing host <laughs> yeah right okay so that's that's the weird thing about this translation is like or not the translation the the adaptation of cersei we see in sea of monsters is very much like like, she doesn't need to fight Annabeth. No. Like, if Annabeth is like, I don't want to be a sorceress, I want to leave, Cersei really should have just been like, okay, bye. And if Annabeth is like, change Percy back, and she didn't, she took the, the, the vitamin so Cersei's powers wouldn't work on her, I really, the next logical thing would Cersei be like, all right, bet, what do you want? Like, yeah, fine. Yeah, really, honestly. I, I do love how she's, like, raging about the multivites. We're like, they have no nutritional value. Which, like, fact, you shouldn't take vitamins or supplements unless you have, like, a licensed medical professional recommends you need them because of a deficiency in some fashion yeah. or other. They're not helpful. Is, uh... How much do you know of the Burning Maze? Oh, I didn't read the Burning Maze. <laughs> I know you didn't. I was just asking how much you knew of it. Jason dies. Cersei is present in the burning maze. What? Holy shit! That's what I, that's really like, that wasn't the one earlier, but this one I did like, cause it's fucking relevant right now. <laughs> you know what? No. Tell us more, DJ. Tell us more. It's okay. She's relevant. She's no, relevant no. in the burning maze. Yeah, what does she uh, do? No, no get, get into it. Yeah. She, I mean, she's there. She's trying to like help. Caligula was his name. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, she's helping Why? Caligula become the sun god. Why? Because he wants to be the sun god, and he's promised her more power. Sir, she, he's promised her revenge. On who? Percy. On Did like the demigods, her, I, okay. Percy and Annabeth, and just like in general demigods. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that one because I'm like. It's also her... fucking Caligula, like. Okay, but Cersei doesn't need more power from a man. That's her no, whole no, 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 no. thing. She represents the threat of femininity that the ancient Greek men couldn't handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it's just like she shows up and it's just like I can't I can't remember specifically what Caligula did promise her. Okay. I know he promised her something. Maybe like a portion of the world that they're going all going to rule, you know, like cuz Obviously, I don't know, uh, but she was like relatively prominent, and I can't say any more before I get into like really spoiler territory. <sighs> All right, because like, Cersei shows it. up relatively quick. Interesting. No, I, I say relatively quick in the sense that's like it's in the first third of the book, maybe. Yeah, I have the Burning Maze. I bought it. I just never read it, and not even like an intentional choice. I just. Never read it. Yeah. Never got and then I never bought the other two. And then we started this podcast, so that proves to be a big problem, a reoccurring yes. problem. 
anyway. So, okay, I like that. I like that. Because that was actually something I want to talk about is, like, after, like, specifically doing the research and, like, learning more about, like, Cersei and her prominence, I was, like, pretty pissed that she, like, never showed back up. Because, again, she's, oh, a, she comes back. she's a goddess. And, and she's, like, a daughter of a titan, basically. But she's a goddess. And so you have... It would have been really cool to have her be more prominent. And so you have, like, Luke and his crew and then, like, the the Camp Half-Blood, like, the heroes and stuff vying to try to see who Cersei is going to side with. Yeah. Like, it's... She comes back and... And she's a villain. Bur- yeah, she's a villain, obviously. Not surprised. Burning Rick Mace- does not like female sorcery. He doesn't like female magic users. They are always villains. And it's always framed as, like, a bad cheap trick. Hecate, what are you talking about? I, I, again, like, I was trying to remember, like, Hecate, but, like, oh, it's, like, very She much- was, like, yeah, she was, like, more wishy-washy about it, but she wasn't evil. She's like, no, I don't want to fucking side with these guys, but I don't want to side with someone who's going to lose. And I can't say that I blame her. No, that's fair. It's just, it just is very like, much you like you need to prove to me that, like, as every fucking god in that in Heroes of Olympus, you need to prove to me that you are worthy of my help. No, I don't mind it. Yeah, I just like it is very like. Also, Hazel. <laughs> and, and again, like it takes it takes us a while to get to Hazel. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, like as we see in like the obviously the early books, he was was his fucking growing pains as a writer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But like pretty consistent of like I mean they I mean they're they're framed as like these female sorceresses are are framed as evil in their myths, right? Like yeah. But even like Cersei is like it's like she turns them into pigs, but she turns them back and all this stuff. Uh, but even that thing is like it's implied that the that the lesson is the the dangers of of like comfort. Like comfort that can distract you from your goal. Like how this horrible wretched woman who was such like a lavish, tropical, peaceful island, but that just kept them from leaving when they really wanted to go. When He was chill with Calypso. It's for seven years! And for like a whole year with Cersei. When no, he... I'm talking about Rick. Oh, I'm talking about... Him well, Calypso, Calypso served a different purpose. Yeah. Calypso wasn't like framed as a sorceress. Not in the same way like Cersei and Medea and Hecate are. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh... I will say Burning Maze has, like, one of my favorite scenes that Apollo, like, does. Okay. Okay, I'm going to read Burning Maze. Got it. I I honestly, I'll have to reread the whole thing because I only have bits and pieces of the first two remembered. No, I feel that. So do you (laughs) want to hear about the sequel to the Odyssey? There was a sequel to the Odyssey? (laughs) Yeah. So it was part of Hesiod's Theogony written around circa 700 BC. And it stated that Circe bore Odysseus three sons. <laughs> Were they triplets? He was only there a year. What the fuck? Probably triplets. Mm-hmm. Or the goddess's body works differently, as we know that, like, I mean, again, Rick Riordan's stuff isn't anything to go off of. Mm-hmm. But Aphrodite and, and and Athena and even like all the other female gods just have like the same age of kids. I was thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, you know Aphrodite's not spending nine months pregnant. No, absolutely not. It's like, oh, positive. Here's the baby. Aphrodite, I don't like. She might, I, she might spend a little time pregnant. And be like, oh, I'm glowing. Yeah. She would Aphrodite def- is the one hundred percent the person to do that shit. But the mom was like, "This isn't fun anymore," and she's gonna pop it out and hand it to the uh, human adult. Yeah, the human adult. Yeah, I love that. Actually, <laughs> I love that take where she's like, "I'm glowing," and it's like, Aphrodite, you're a goddess. You're literally always glowing, though. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> there is. Uh, I bet she has maternity pics of all of her kids. Oh, her, she like, does though, right? Like the whole like, like the whole extra maternity picks that like I think it was Kim Kardashian did with whoever the fuck I don't follow. Yeah, her. like so but over the top, like completely naked, over the pregnant top. belly. Yeah, carefully posed so it's safe for Instagram. Yeah, flowers hands, everywhere. Just like hands them to the fucking like if if she ever feels like it, hands it to the, also the fucking adult human. Yeah, like, she would. Right, though. She would definitely be like. Here you go. Here's your baby and the pictures of my pregnancy. <laughs> here's your baby and here you go. 
we fucked like two weeks ago. How did this <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I just it's crazy. This one was a little bit more. The pic- this one just like the pictures were too good. I had to keep going back. That's longer than it usually is. <laughs> so <laughs> I fucking love that. That's hilarious. She's not even in this book. No, she's not. <laughs> we, we get her in the next book. We'll circle back. Anyway, so so Cersei has three kids. Well, the the story about the third one was like an epic called the Tele Telegoni, essentially, and this epic is now lost. Only fragments have existed, but essentially the gist is this: Cersei eventually tells her youngest son who his father is, so he goes to meet him with the and give him. Wait, wait, wait. Right, so Cersei eventually tells him who his father is, and this kid. And he's like a he's like an adult at this point. He's in his twenties. Goes to find his father with the poison spear his mother gave him. Why, Cersei? Why a poison <laughs> spear? Cause she's a bitch. She's yeah. a vengeful bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh so Telegonus rolls up on Ithaca and starts ravaging the land. So Odysseus shows up and is like, the fuck? So Teladogus kills him because they get in a fight, but he doesn't know Odysseus is his dad. And then right. uh, then he finds out what happened. So he takes Telemachus, Odysseus's other son, by Penelope, and also Penelope back to Cersei's Aea mom. with Odysseus's corpse. What the fuck? And uh, in some versions, Cersei marries Telemachus and... Telegonus marries Penelope by the advice of Athena, Athena, and then Cersei makes all three of the others immortal as well. Huh. And an, an alternative poem from the third century uh, depicted Cersei as using her magic to bring Odysseus back to life. Okay. And then Odysseus has Telemachus marry one of Cersei's daughters. And then sometimes later, Telemachus has a curl, quarrel with his mother-in-law and kills her. And then Cersei's daughter, his wife, whose name is like uh, Cassiphone, which is not it, Persephone. Cassiphone. Yeah, Cassiphone. Yeah. Cassiphone murders Telemachus. And then Odysseus dies of grief. What the fuck? I don't know! I want to. I wish. I wish this epic wasn't lost. I'd love to hear about well, it. Damn, what the fuck? <laughs> so it that's a uh, fucking wild. That's fucking wild. That's that's Cersei in Greek mythology. And again, my girl had a much bigger role. And I'm very, very glad you told me that she shows back up in she does in the series because I I like that because I was very much like. This is like a prominent fucking character in group mythology. She deserved way more than what is essentially a throwaway chapter that adds not a lot to the overarching plot of the book it's even in. And then is actually retconned to be important later for Reyna. <laughs> I know. That shit was wild. God, Reyna should have kicked Percy's ass for that. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah but like at, the, at that same time, Reyna was standing there looking at Percy... No thought, head empty fucking Percy with no memories. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Can it's you not really fair. Be mad at that guy? It's not fair to like get mad at someone if they don't know what they did That's wrong. That's why later she's like, yeah, no, I was on that island and I, I mean, I'm whatever. I'm like way better now, but my sister hates you. You probably met her. <laughs> yeah, you, pro- you probably met her. Percy's yeah. like, who is she? She hates you. Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> she, she hates you. You met her. She was queen of the Amazons. Oh, oh her. That explains a bit. <laughs> God, I hate how Rick portrays the Amazons in this fucking series. Moving it was weird. on. It was a little weird. <laughs> so weird. It's another, like, Hydra creates Starbucks weird joke. <laughs> was. Anyway, we'll get to it eventually. We're doing Magnus Chase next. So yes. that'll give me a break. So Cersei is not a witch. I want to no. specify this. She's she is a, a goddess who does magic. And that's or other, different. Or, or other also portrayed as a sorceress, which is also different. Which is also different than a witch, yes. However, uh, 
Cersei is one of the female sorceresses of antiquity who does fold into the inspirations of our witch archetypes in modern pop culture. Yes. So we're going to talk about witches today. There we are. Fuck yeah. We're talk about some witches. DJ, I, I have had the floor for quite a bit, so even though I am actually the witch of this podcast, I will let the floor to you. Who do you got oh, for us? Oh, man. I don't got a lot, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real here. I don't focus on a lot of, like, witchy stuff. And even then, like, the stuff that I watch. All right. I don't know if I... I again, let's... Uh, Looper.com, thank you so much for the most iconic pop culture witches. <laughs> okay. Maleficent? Oh, I have Maleficent on my list for this specific reason. Maleficent is not a witch. Yeah, I would not put her in a witch. Maleficent is a fairy. Yes. Very, very specifically, she is a fairy. Even if you go back to like the old, the the, the folklore of Sleeping Beauty, she's a fairy who was slighted because she was not invited to the christening. Yes. And that's As why she know curses of the ancient baby. Fairy, uh, from that Tumblr post that everybody, ancient fairy uh, politics and manner, mannerisms. Mm-hmm. If. You are not invited. Like, uh, uh, the birth of a royal one is public. Big fucking deal. And if you're not invited, then you are not wanted there, and that is a very big slight. A, and you, here's a fun fact. You don't slight the fae. You, do, you don't slight Maleficent specifically. Well, yes, let's yes. Be but, like, really any fairy. fairy. Here's the thing. If any, you, yeah, any fairy. If, like, let's say Maleficent did get the cool. invite, she would have rolled up. Got, like, here's a kick-ass gift, because I'm a fairy, we're all given gifts, I'm gonna show up. But let's say she didn't invite, like, fucking Flora, Fauna, or Merryweather. They were gonna be pissed, too, because they're also fae. Yeah. That's how they roll. What if them would have showed up and cursed, and cursed the baby at uh, Aurora, and then Maleficent probably would have handled that problem. Because <laughs> she's more yeah. powerful. Uh, so, not a witch. Not a witch. I, there was, like, everyone else, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And I just saw my lips and I'm like, I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know, yeah, right? Uh, but there was one that I'm like, yeah. Uh, Scarlet, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Scarlet gotta, Witch. Oh, Scarlet Witch. Right, okay, she's also on my list, but only because I really just wanted to talk about Wanda. <laughs> no, that's fair. Wanda's great. Wanda's great. Oh, and you finally watched WandaVision. If you haven't seen WandaVision, highly, highly recommend it. Oh, it's so good. It's the best one uh, so far. Yeah. Like. Um, WandaVision and the Star Lord T'Challa episode of What If are just the best things on on the Disney Plus run so far. Also, out of like all the What Ifs, I saw that one. I'm like that one interests me most. It's the best one. There's only three out so far. That's the best one. Hands fucking. You expect me to go watch Guardians of the Galaxy and watch fucking Chris Pratt be Star Lord when you show me what could have been? No, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, I'll still watch. I think it could be fun. Uh, and then. The Hocus Pocus witches. Sanderson sisters, yeah, I've got them on my list. Because they, I mean, they're specifically classic traditional witches, but like Cersei, they also turn people into animals. At least one. Thackeray Binks is turned into a cat. A weirdly immortal cat. (laughs) Uh, Everybody's favorite, Sabrina. I also have Sabrina. I'm sure she's turned to people and animals, but Sabrina was actually one of the very first shows I was super, super into. Yes, it was. Like, we had DVR. I recorded every episode of Sabrina, and they would air in order on what was at the time ABC Family. And so I watched- Every time they would get to the end, they just started back over. Start on episode one. Yeah. I- They'd go to that- Yeah. Very end. Here's the episode. Weird wedding episode where she like runs off on her wedding and there's Harvey waiting for her on a motorcycle and they ride off together. Next, very next episode, Sabrina, 16 years old, floating off of her bed and her aunts being like, oh, her powers are developing. It's constant ever. It's constantly teenage Sabrina trapped in the cycle. I watched the entire series, I swear to God, at least four times through when I was in middle school and high school. I believe it. You always had that series running. I bet it was so annoying. I mean, it was whatever. I was more focused on the games that I was playing on our PS2 and Xbox. That's nice of you, DJ. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Housewife and Mom from Bewitched. (gasps) I also have Samantha on my list. Yeah, this this list, (laughs) looper.com. Yep. Thank you again. You, I've been to your website a couple of times for lists like these. Let's see if I can jump over and maybe find some more obscure ones. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about uh, about the not just Samantha, but like the witches from Bewitched. I, I really uh, liked on this list because they, I mean, also 
turning people into animals is kind of like a reoccurring thing on Bewitched. Uh, Ador- uh, Endora, Samantha's mother, does turn her husband, Darren, into a toad, a billy goat, a werewolf, and a pony. Uh, Samantha herself also accidentally turns her husband into a goose at one time. And uh-huh. her daughter, Tabitha, did turn a boy into a bulldog. So they very much have the witches turning dudes into animals thing, even if it's like sometimes by accident. And usually in Dora, it's only for a scene and she has to turn Darren back real quick, which like, Samantha, why? He seems like such a stick in the mud. Why do you want to be with this guy? What makes, why? I don't get it. This guy? Really? Well, maybe he's got something else to offer. Maybe, but I've his whole watched it, so. okay. But his whole maybe he does. Maybe he's super charming, and they get along great, and he adores her. But his whole thing is like, I don't want you doing any weird witchy things, <laughs> and that's shitty. That's really. This was also the fifties. <laughs> yeah, it was fifty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's no excuse. The fifties suck <laughs> still. <laughs> the fifties suck. And if you're like... a witch, you don't have to. You do not. The point of Cersei is that she does not have to subscribe to the traditional hierarchy of the ancient Grecian times because she has this power and that is what makes her a threat. Samantha, live up to your roots. Go on. Uh, Twitches. I remember that movie. Yeah. I think it's Twitches based on a book. Great. Oh, Probably. Twitches is funny because the twins are named Artemis and Apollo. Are they? Yeah, I mean they they uh Maybe that's their the like birth book? names are Artemis and Apollo and oh, one of okay. them their powers are strongest in the day and the other one their powers are strongest at night, sun and the that's moon. That's pretty great. Yeah. Is it based off a book cuz it just says Twin Witches in the Disney Channel original movie. I always assumed it felt like it was based off a book. That's fair. Hermione Granger. Yep. Very good witch, very good witch. Doesn't turn people into pigs all too often. No, no. She's never turned into an animal. I, I have McGonagall on my list because she turns herself into a cat. That she does. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twitches Hagrid, is a novel series. Oh, okay. Hagrid, uh, what the fuck is that little shit's name? Oh, yeah, he tries to turn Dudley into a pig. Dudley, Dudley yeah. Dursley, and that's what his name fucking was. And uh, Barty Crouch Jr., under the guise of Mad-Eye Moody, does turn Draco Malfoy into a ferret. There we go. So so men being turned into animals. There it is. But it was done by dudes. <laughs> I've, I've got another dude example. Uh, Dr. Felicier from Princess and the Frog, the Shadow Man. Yeah. He, he uses his, his magic, his friends from the other side powers to turn Naveen into a frog. Based off of Baron Somedy. That is a real voodoo dude. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, is the whole he is. I think I'm pretty sure he's what like when you see voodoo and you see the voodoo dude, that's who he is. He's Baron Somdi with like the whole skull face painted on and everything like that. Iconic. Yeah. I do appreciate how in that movie. And I'm not, I I'm just going to drip over. Uh, I mean, Dr. Felicia is a bad guy. And he's like, oh, he's using voodoo. And he's got like all this stuff in the shadows. And then you meet Mama Odie. And she's like the good, like helper magic user of the Disney movie. But she also uses voodoo. Like they're not saying, yeah. oh, she uses a different kind of magic. Like, no, she's also using voodoo. It's like voodoo itself is not harmful. It is the way it's being used. I thought that was interesting. Uh... Yeah, Baron Samedi, uh is the Lua of Haitian voodoo. That's cool. It's just the spirit of Haitian voodoo. Oh, okay. So he, is he like a deity type? He's a deity type, yeah. Oh, tight. I don't it's know a lot about whole... about voodoo. It's very fascinating, yeah. though, and I, I love... Mild tangent. He's in Smite. <laughs> I was so worried we weren't going to get to Smite in this episode. Uh, we wouldn't have if, had you not brought him up, honestly. <laughs> They're, I mean, Cersei's not in Smite. No, that's a bummer. But Baron Somedy is, and it's hilarious to me because, yeah, it's it, his pantheon that he's classified under is the Voodoo Pantheon. Mm-hmm. And the symbol for the pantheon is that skull on Baron Somedy's face. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and his top hat. And I'm like, who else are they going to add to the to the Voodoo Pantheon? Who else can you add? I've never heard of, like, first of all, 
it's just funny to me. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a... Uh, we don't. We have not been exposed to a lot of like voodoo traditions. We are from Idaho, so we are from Idaho. Our father is very traditionally Catholic, yeah, well, Christian at this point. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's Catholic. So that's that's not something we've gotten. And I also think like in like typical storytelling, people who are like of these like practices and of these traditions have not had the opportunity to have their stories like told and retold in the same way like Greek mythology stories are getting to be like told or like. Western European folk tales get to be told yeah. like that. So, but I think we're seeing like that shift and we're getting a lot more like closure stories. I imagine like the Rick Riordan Presents line is, is part of that like movement to get these stories to be able to have those like kind of like showing how they can be told in like modern contexts, much like all of like the Percy Jackson books got to do that. I've been meaning to check those out. Uh, they actually look like a lot of fun. Yeah, but they do. Again, I'm just not much of a reader. Eventually, we'll we'll get people on. And then we'll have an excuse to talk to them about these books. Yes. Probably. Maybe. Uh, I have on my list The Witches from The Witches by Roland Dahl. Don't know it. You don't know The Witches? Oh, okay. Nope. Okay. So it's it's by, do you know the author? Sounds familiar. He he wrote uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant uh, Peach. Okay. But, yes. So The Witches is one of his books. It is about, hey, witches are real and they hate children. So much so that they do things like trap them in paintings where they just appear like this little figure in the painting just moves and moves and you watch them age and die. <laughs> it's really Holy fucking shit. dark. But all of the witches in the world, like the grand high witch, they want to turn all the children of the world into rats so adults will kill them. And oh, they hate kids that... because kids smell so bad to them. That's ridiculous. But yeah, there was a, I think it was in the Looper one, now that I'm at a different one. Probably. It did show up, actually. I'm like, interesting. It's like, we're yep. going to get those brats, rats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I'm not surprised that the witches are on there. But yeah, they, they are on there. And mostly because, like, I mean, they're witches. They're terrible. The book is so fucking That's scary. That's horrifying. Like, <laughs> that sounds horrifying. Yeah. Spoiler uh, for the witches. The little boy, the protagonist does get turned into a mouse and they don't turn him back. And he knows he is going to age and die with a mouse's lifespan. That's rough. Yeah. I mean, he and his grandmother, a retired witch hunter, do end up defeating all of the witches. So it's like, I remember correctly, not a problem anymore. And the the boy's kind of like, oh, it's okay. I'll probably live as long as my grandmother will now. And it's like, the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Jesus. Uh... Now, do we count the other mother from Coraline? Is that a witch? Oh. Is that a witch of her domain? Interesting, interesting. I, I, here's. I've only seen the movie. I have never seen the movie and never read the book, which is a horrible, wild thing to admit as a huge Neil Gaiman fan, I know. Dude. It scares me. I've, no, that's fair. I've heard that the book is like way scarier than the movie. Like they absolutely child like dolled up the movie. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. The uh, Neil Gaiman like sending different publishers. already like unsettling enough. Yeah, publishers were like, "This is too scary for kids. We can't publish it." And he's like, "Well, you have a kid, right?" And like, "Yeah, well, like, we'll let your kids read it and see what they think." And the little girl was like, "No, it's it's not too scary. I really like it." So they published the book. Years and years later, Neil Gaiman is at like the premiere of the Coraline play or musical. I don't remember which one it is. He's sitting by the little girl who's a grown up now, basically, uh, and he nice. tells her, "Oh yeah," he tells her about it, and she's like. Oh, yeah, I lied to my mom. It scared me so bad, but I wanted to know what happens next. (laughs) It was too scary to be published. I want to sit down and read it, like, or at least listen to it or something. I'm sure it's great. I think based on what I know about the other mother, I don't think she's a witch. I would classify her as kind of like a demon type, some sort of like embodiment of of this, this darkness, this chaos, this fear spirit type deal mm. okay yeah but i i don't think this is a witch because i think w- witches have because here's the thing like and we're like how do you do what's the difference between a witch and a sorceress like right uh which is more nature-based sorcerers are inherent are we using D rules well that's just like how i how yeah. i know those the differences between those wizards you learn the way you do it Sorcerers are inherent. Warlocks, you borrow it, and like witches are like 
kind of like druids in that sense that it's more like nature based magic. Interesting, interesting, anything. interesting. I like that classification. Yeah, I feel like because I was like trying to say what's the difference. Like, yeah, we could say first? witches are the female version of wizards, but that's just not right, and everybody fucking knows it. Everybody fucking knows it. Those are two different things. Yes, I think. I think you're you're right. I feel like sorceresses in in pop culture tend to they're very very powerful, but they can be cut off from their magic through some fashion or another. More like a warlock. Well, I'm just like I'm just trying to figure it out because yeah, like whereas like culture, yeah. like if you like let's say they they lose their powers because you take away their magical element or they're cut or there's something like that happens or their powers are taken away. Whereas like witches. I would say, like, it, traditionally, if someone is a witch, they're probably not going to be as powerful as a sorceress. Yeah. But you rarely see witches lose their powers. Yeah. And they, they tend to be, like, an inherent skill. Well, sorceresses with study can grow their powers and become more and more powerful. I feel like a, a witch, they have a set level of power, and they can learn how to access it, but they can't grow their power beyond what they inherently have. Whereas sorceresses mm-hmm. can because it's coming from external places. And I'm not saying that is the, the definitive definition of how a witch or a sorceress would behave in any sort of medium. That's just yeah. like me in this moment trying to figure out what the difference is. Yeah, I get that. And not just witches are ugly and sorceresses are hot. Like I was literally finding when I was Googling what's the difference <laughs> between a witch and a sorceress. No, that's not what it's not. Yeah. No, no. fuck off. This is ugly sorceress erasure and I will not have it. <laughs> Powerful women do not exist to fulfill your Western standards of beauty. Yeah. Anyway, Ursula. Ursula. Sea witch. witch literally turns people into like the little amoeba things. They're not like animals, but like they're things. Yeah. Elphaba. That's a shout out to you, Darren, because I know you really like Wicked. I do love Wicked. Yeah, I yeah. I've seen it and I've been, I've been, I really want to. Oh, it's kick ass. Yeah, no, Wicked is fabulous. I read the book. Book's weird. Play's great. Book's weird. <laughs> Book's weird. Real fucking weird. It's a whole series. Only read Wicked. And then I just saw the play and I'm like, I'm good. I'll just, li- I'll just listen to the soundtrack again and again for the rest of my life. Uh, I would say the Wicked Witch of the West, like the original Oz Witch. Also, yeah. uh, because like more so than Alphaba in terms of like being like Cersei. Because she uses, like, poppies to knock out, like, Dorothy and her friends. So she uses, like, herbs and then, like, drugs for the magic. Poppies to put them to sleep. Yeah. Uh, the Good Witch of the North. Yeah, yeah, She's Glinda. She, she doesn't do much. No, she shows up in a bubble um, and fucks off. Yeah, since... She says, well, hey, go down that road. It's yellow. It's made of bricks. See ya. Much like Cersei does send... Do- Dorothy on a quest. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. You're gonna need it. I'm not gonna help you. Yeah, you got it. Uh, uh I've got I gotta shout out the the white witch from Chronicles of Narnia. Uh the white bitch. Yeah, <laughs> not wrong. But no. uh, her her uh, name is actually uh Jadis. Jadis. She has a name, actually. Yeah. Like Yeah, no, yeah, I believe it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, of course she's got a name. What fucking character in a series that long is actually named the White Witch? I think in Narnia they do only like in Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe they do only call her the White Witch, but in Magician's Nephew is where you discover her backstory and her like her real name. She's only called the White Witch because she like cast the spell over Narnia that made it an eternal winter. Yeah, I mean that'll get you the name White Witch. That'll do it. Uh, yeah. I had one. Oh, the Baba Yaga. Oh, Baba Yaga is great. Yeah, I I would love to talk more about the Baba Yaga on this. It's like Baba Yaga. She that's like is the, in Smite. She's on Smite. I'm so glad to hear she's in Smite. Baba Yaga's super cool. Yeah, she's pretty dope. Uh, with her walking house and what have you. Mm-hmm. And just like you can go to Baba Yaga to. You have to. It's interesting because like her her character or it, characterizing like place in that like. Eastern European folklore is very Slavic. interesting. Huh? Slavic. Yeah, Slavic, Slavic. folklore. Thank you, DJ. Is yep. very, like, 
she can be an antagonist or she can be an ally and like whatever the myth is and it's it's hard to tell what she's going to do or like if she's going to be helpful or what you have to do to get the help just a genuine witch yeah she like runs on her own like internal logic and there is like common uh theory of in for of like if folklorists have this theory that she was very likely remnants of an old goddess and this is like yeah. the pieces of that old goddess and like why she is the way she is is because it's very much like a god like how this like they're very finicky they're very fickle they don't always like do they behave one way and then they'll behave another way and like that would make sense is like how, how baba yaga what her like maybe Operate. ancient ancient origins in those like oral traditions were yeah very much enjoy that uh, myth honestly is a lot of fun mm-hmm uh, I gotta since we're talking about witches again, I have to make a a a We've been correction. About Where have you been? Huh? We've been talking about witches. Where have you been? <laughs> well, the last time we talked about witches uh, is when we were talking about uh, kind of like groups of three, but way back oh, when yeah, we were yeah. talking about the fates, right? And we talked about I mentioned the the characters from Charmed. And I believe I referred to them as the witch sisters. And I say I believed. I know for a fact I refer to them as a witch as the witch sisters because Skylar Barsanti has never fucking let that go. <laughs> and will remind me on the regular that that's they're the charmed ones. They're not the witch sisters. So witch. so for, for Skylar, my dear friend, great supporter of the podcast, past guest Skylar, they are called the charmed ones. Their names are Prue, Piper, and Phoebe. Nice. <laughs> and they are witches. They are witches. So are the witches from Macbeth, since we're going to bring up back old stuff. Let's do it. Witches from Macbeth. Love the witches from Macbeth. We definitely talked about them when we talked about the Grey Sisters. Yep. We're they don't turn anybody sure into animals, we're but... about the fates, too. Mm-hmm. They're just classics. Yeah. This is another I mean... th- group of three witches. Yeah. I mean, Shakespeare was very much, like, pulling from those, like, witch oh, archetypes yeah. from, like, Greek, but also from, like... Welsh and Celtic folklore. Oh, one hundred percent. Morgan Le Fay. Hey, I've That's got Morgan Le Fay on my notes too. Uh, it's another common theory, not common theory, but uh, some scholarship has identified elements of both Circe and Medea as possibly inspiring the character of Morgan Le Fay. I wouldn't doubt it. In like the or specifically her version of like how she behaves in medieval legend, not necessarily her earliest roots in Celtic folklore. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one in Smite. She was the second most recent got added. She's a bitch. Good. She should be. She's Morgan Le Fay. Yeah, <laughs> she's a bitch to deal with. Uh, the Morgan. Oh, the Morgan. Celtic. Yes, yeah, she is a tel- she's a Celtic death goddess. She's a triple goddess. Okay. She's very cool. I I don't know if I'd call her a witch. I mean, like much like Cersei, she's a goddess, but they're not yeah. very similar. No. Uh I got no more witches to come to mind. No, I I've covered my list. Do you want to talk briefly about Cersei herself in pop culture? You know, I haven't actually seen Cersei all too much. Yeah, me me neither. Actually, to be honest, this is just from like general research and the ones that I liked the most to bring to the table. Uh-huh. So we've got comic books, classic yeah. source of Greek figures reappearing. I mean, if you can't find a Greek figure in a comic book, then they're either not actually a Greek figure and came up later, mm-hmm. or so fucking obscure. <laughs> That only you and the guy who wrote that article knows about them. Ah, there it is. Uh, Cersei has appeared in the DC Comics. She is a Wonder Woman villain and is in league with the witchcraft goddess Hecate. Because apparently Hecate is like a bad god in DC. But like, you know, so is Hades. So we move past it. Yeah. In Marvel Universe, the eternal Cersei, created by Jack Kirby, is based off of Cersei and, in fact, did transform Odysseus's men into pigs in the comic universe. But she only did so because they were just acting like dicks at her party. 
Understandable. Mm-hmm. And and if this I had one... the chance to, if or if I had the power to, and somebody was acting like a dick at my party, I'd turn them into a big two. That's the only, that's the only right way to do it. This is just you're just making a, you're making an ass of yourself. You get big time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mentioned that one specifically because the Eternals movie is about to come out. That just felt timely. That's right. I saw the trailer for that when we went to go see uh, Free Guy. Yeah, but right next, I was there. We yeah. saw. It. <laughs> that, like that, that's why I'm like, oh wait, yeah. I went to see it with her. Yeah. Um, didn't look like a Marvel movie. It it's very different, or at very least the trailer. Yeah. It's different, right? It's They're it's like, not like I was looking at that and I'm like, dude, like. They're showing like five or six different settings in this one movie. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It's definitely going to be sweeping. We'll see if it's. Yeah, there's a lot to do with that one. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Looking forward to it, though. So one more. Two more. <laughs> and these ones are, are partly for me. Partly for friend of the show, past guest and God tier patron supporter, Tim O'Connor. Mm-hmm. In Carl, in the 1963 Carl Banks comic Oddball Odyssey, Magica Dispel, who is a prominent DuckTales villain, <laughs> impersonates a descendant of Cersei to lure Scrooge McDuck onto a Mediterranean island to fuck with him. Uh, she ends up turning Scrooge, Donald, and the nephews into animals, uh, but, you know, they deal with the problem and it's fine. A different animal <laughs> different di- right different animals that's what so in the actual original ducktales cartoon from the 80s you actually do have cersei and she is uh, a pig right like the ducktales they're all animals she's a pig mm-hmm. and she's trying to send homer into the future question mark not seeing this episode it's weird i don't know why homer is there or why we care but yeah I also wonder if this article is a typo and it meant Odysseus, but the her cat interrupts the spell, and so she s- somehow brings Scrooge and the triplets back in time. Uh, she turns Scrooge and Homer into pigs, but, you know, Huey solves the problem by smashing her medallion. It reverses all the spells, so everyone she's turned into animals turns back into the right anthropomorphic animal, but Cersei herself is turned into a just regular pig. Because there are also just regular animals in the DuckTales universe. Uh, they're not de- domesticated. <laughs> that is that is a uh, that is a screenshot from a comic, and it was I think it was Scrooge or somebody going out and be like, "All right, I'm going hunting." And they turn around with a gun and point it at Donald. And Donald's like, not me. I'm domesticated. (laughs) Uh, Tim, text me. Let me know what's up with that. And so those are the big Cersei ones. Um, I mean, she's appeared at least like by name via reference in in a lot of things. Yeah, it's a good name. It's a great name. I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones... Cersei is probably a reference to like I don't think she turns anybody to animals, but a reference she, to a powerful witch. Yeah, yeah, but she's kind of like a monster of a character, so that tracks. Yeah, and then another character like in like the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, there was a character named Cersei who like turned people into animals, but she's not the <laughs> Cersei. It's just what she does. So that's a pretty common thing, but yeah, Cersei's not Cersei's just doesn't show up frequently. <sighs> No, which is interesting. Well, when she does, it's usually pretty flat. She's the villain. Uh, oh, I before we end the episode, I definitely have to just mention Cersei, the the novel by Madeline Miller, as a very recent retelling of the Cersei story. Uh, Madeline Miller is best known for Song of Achilles. Mm-hmm. No, I haven't read it. Yes, I'm going to. I do own it. I literally have it right next to me. <laughs> I meant to read it before this episode, and... Ne- that never happened, even though I bought it on my birthday back in February. <laughs> I can't be trusted <laughs> with anything. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I... Hot take, I like Cersei. I bet Cersei could be a lot more fun than that what she's represented as. Yeah, right. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. 
is she more fun in, in Trials of Apollo, or is it kind of the same? She has a little more depth. Okay, okay. But again, she's a villain. I mean... I can't... I'm sitting there, and I'm like, dude, Cersei's such a bitch. Especially what she's, like, actually doing. Okay. It's really fucked up. Oh, I'm excited. I love it when villains do terrible things. Because that's what they're supposed like, to do I'm to their villains. I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude... Like, I, I kind of get it, but this is not a good way to go about what you're trying to accomplish here, Cersei. Mm. This is super fucked up. Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it so we can discuss it proper. But, yeah, I I like Cersei. I think she's a cool character. I think she does a lot of interesting things. I think she's definitely been... Shafted. Yes, thank you! By men yep. specifically. Because <laughs> that's what they do. And I'm not, look, look, look. Was she wrong? I, I can't say. I cannot speak on that. But like Blackbeard like, and his crew were better as guinea pigs. Blackbeard died an incredible death. <laughs> After definitely causing a lot of pain and suffering for a lot of people. At that time, I would argue that so was the governments trying to stop him. I would this say at, the Caribbean. At, I would say at this time, governments still do the same shit. That doesn't. Yeah. It... <laughs> I mean, it's incredible death or not, like she turned Blackbeard into a guinea pig and definitely solved a lot of problems with that move. And for that, I thank her. What happened to Blackbeard and his crew? Do, do they get turned back into guinea pigs? No, they don't. They ravage the island yeah. and like kidnap a bunch of the people there and just go about and do their thing until Reyna oh, conquers the- them. Oh, okay, okay. And fucking becomes the captain and like moves on to like the Roman thing. Okay, cool. I have no I'm idea sure. what happened to the crew after that. Like she doesn't go on to explain that. But she definitely she kills might. them. One hundred percent. Like she definitely killed. Like, hey. We're going. We're going to New Rome, and the moment she shows up, she kills them. Yes, and I. I'm. Let's stop before this gets dark. Because holy <laughs> shit! To, hey, these pirates ravaged this island full of women. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, hold on. We have to end it on a different note. We can't end it on that note. I'm gonna <laughs> cut that part out with the end on something else. Uh, DJ, 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 DJ. I'm going to ask a question that in this situation would be most applicable to you and your experience. If you were going to be turned into an animal by a sorceress when you landed on Hunter Island, what animal would you hope it would be? Honey badger. Totes. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect answer <laughs> for you. I love it. What about you? Not I to say be... that you would ever get because you're a girl. Exactly. But... <laughs> I wouldn't be turned into the animal. I would 100% like, Cersei, I would love to learn magic at your knee. Thank you. Either a honey badger or a raccoon for me, honestly. <sighs> Raccoons are so cute. They're a little... Yeah, I think raccoon would be better because they 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 have the the the, the hands are more their dexterous. Tiny hands, the little tiny hands. You can use tools, and I think you'd be able to. to you could still game. I think I you probably you probably couldn't use a controller. I don't think their thumbs are like as dexterous, no. but you could do keyboard. No. You could continue to game as a. As you a can figure it out. Can we get? I'm gonna commission podcast art of you as a raccoon in a Camp Half-Blood T-shirt. Um. Oh, that's precious. Okay, thank you so much for joining us on this episode, everybody. This has been a, a magical ride. This is a fun episode. I enjoyed myself. Yeah, DJ, thank you so much for suggesting. I meant to credit you earlier because I was like, I don't know what, what angle to take. And you're like, let's just talk about sorceresses. And I'm like, fuck <laughs> yeah, yeah witchy women. And sorceresses in pop culture. There you go. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We appreciate your time and just hanging out with us. Uh, yeah, make sure we will drop the link to that Looper article if you want to read the whole thing. Also, make sure you go check out Owen and and his podcast. It's super fun. Uh, also, go check out... I'm going to just name a couple other Percy Jackson ones. Fatal Flaw <laughs> and Seaweed Brain. Only because the, the, the Percy Beth moment in Sea of Monsters at Susan Island was so top of mind for me while recording because I did just listen to their episodes where those podcasters were talking about it. And it made me be like, oh shit, yeah, let me hyper-analyze this scene. It's so good. <laughs> so yeah, Seaweed That's Brain fair. with... Uh, Erica and Carter and Fatal Flaw with Maddie and Molly. They're all just super cool, really nice pers- like Rick Riordan, uh, Riordan versus podcasters and I'm glad we're part of that community. A lot of fun. So, Thank yeah. you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. It does mean a lot. 
So we will be back in your ears on Tuesday, September 28th, talking about the sirens. And another Persebeth moment. Yeah. I'm excited. You guys have a great day. Awesome. And until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. The show is produced by Darian and DJ Smart, as well as... Tim O'Connor, the Crystal Con Man. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hain. And our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Like the show? Ready for more? Support Podcast of Poseidon on Patreon. Just $1 gets you exclusive bonus content. Find out more at patreon.com slash podcast of Poseidon. Can't spare the drachmas? You can support the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or by sharing us with your friends. Find all of our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening. 